Hi, Stacy here with Bluebird Paper and Thread. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today is Tuesday, November 21st, and this is probably the third time I've filmed this video. <clears throat> I filmed it um, twice a couple weekends ago, and I wanted to sit down and work on um, a felt ornament and edit as I was stitching, <clears throat> and I can't find the footage. It's, it's gone. I'm not surprised, but it's gone. So I decided I would sit down and film it again for you. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this channel is on my hobbies, cross stitching, sewing, paper crafting, eventually, hopefully a little bit of quilting. I enjoy uh, making cards, treat boxes, uh, gift tags, things like that. Um, if you recently subscribed, welcome. I appreciate you taking the moment to uh, hit that subscribe button. And if you are returning, you've been with me for a while, thank you so much for coming back. I do um, appreciate you. So today's video, <clears throat> told of my favorite things. In the paper crafting world, they often do these um, videos where they count down or outline 10, 12, 15 of their favorite products that were released through the year. I have only been back at stitching for a little over a year and <clears throat> I have come across some products that I really do enjoy. Now I'm sure that for some of you, if not most of you, um, you'll know about these already, but maybe uh, how I use a couple of them might be might be new to you, might be a little, a little different. And um, so I just thought I would take a minute and just tell you what are my go-to products for different things. And I do have 12 of them. So let's just start at number one. And we'll just jump right in. Excuse me. Just got through with lunch, so. <laughs> Anyways. Um, my first thing that I really like and that I reach for all the time is highlighter tape. And this is what it looks like. And it is uh, a transparent tape that you can see through. that you can see through. And what I use this for <clears throat> is to, for, for a couple of things. If I mess up uh, on a spot and I don't have time to go back and fix it, I'll take a piece of tape and I will stick it over that, that spot on the chart so that I know there's a piece of tape there. I need to go back and figure out why it's there. I did that with the uh, weigh-in, the December weigh-in on the first gingerbread face, the gingerbread girl, her face. Um, I didn't, I, I omitted a row and I caught it. And so it was the end of the night. I wasn't going to rip it out then. So I just put a piece of tape over it. So the next time I picked up the piece or the next time I worked with that color floss, I would be able to go back and fix it at that time. The other thing that I use the tape for <clears throat> is I use it for um, helping me count and helping me keep my place. So the most recent chart is the We Santa 2023 that I've been working on. Um, that was a start this week. And I found that when I started working on his coat, the grid, the chart is so small I didn't necessarily need to make a working copy to highlight, but my highlighter tape helped keep me on track. So I would use it to mark off where I was stitching. Um, when I'm done for the night, I mark it off and, and what I've stitched is from the tape line down. So it just kind of helps me to stay, um, to stay on track and to stay organized when I'm stitching. Um, so this, and it's, you know, you get a lot, um, and it's, it'll probably last me years. So I, I love it. I will list, by the way, all of the things that I talk about today. I will list them in the description box below. 
I will put, if I can find them on Amazon, I'll put an Amazon link. Uh, please know that I am in the affiliate program for Amazon. So if you click on my Amazon link, I will get a commission off of your purchase, but it's at no extra cost to you. Um, I will also, if I can find it on another source that's, that doesn't have a um, an affiliate link I will I will include that as well I'm only I'm not an affiliate with anybody else I'm just I just joined the affiliate program for Amazon anyways um, so highlighter tape I will list it below it's it's my number one the next thing that I love <clears throat> is my Morgan hoop I've had this hoop for years and years and the reason I like it, well, I got it for um, punch needle. I went to my local needle workshop, which sadly is no longer, no longer in business. But I went to my local needle workshop and I wanted to try punch needle. She's like, have you tried it? I'm like, no. So, of course, I came home with all the things. Um, the hoop, monk's cloth, punch needle, a pattern, all the things. What I like about this hoop is that your fabric locks into it and it stays put. So the inside hoop has a channel. I don't know if you can see that really well. Yeah, it has a channel. And then the outside hoop has this raised area here. And it fits together and it locks your fabric nice and tight. So I even like using it with my cross stitch because it doesn't um, pull out. I have other hoops that I do use as well, but if this one's available and it's um, small enough to work on a piece, this is my go-to 99% of the time. I have tried the Q-Snap. Um, I need to try it again. When I tried it, it was too heavy for my hand. It put too much pressure on my arm. So, I, and I think, I feel like that's so ridiculous to say, but I didn't I didn't like it. I was holding it and it was awkward. And I did a small one. I didn't do a very big one. I think eight inches is what I did um, with my for my first one. And I just didn't enjoy it. I will try it again and see if I feel any differently about it. Um, maybe when my arms aren't so tired. And we'll go from there. Um, so anyways, number two, Morgan Hoop. Number three, the um, Floss Fix Clubs. Um, I've already filed, I've already put the, the floss away. This is how I'm trying my floss storage right now. I'm not going to say this is my favorite because I just started it a week ago. But um, you get, they have the Classic Color Works, they have the Weeks Dye Works, and they have NPI um, in the Floss Fix. The Classic Color Works and the Weeks Dye Works. It's about $18, $19 shipped to you. Uh, NPI, I believe it's closer to $28. I'm not 100% sure. Again, through uh, Fat Quarter Shop. And what they're doing is they're going down the alphabet. Now, they're not hitting every single color, but they're going down the alphabet. And uh, at least they're not hitting every single color that I'm aware of. But I'm getting a good, a good stash of them. And I've been pulling, I've had some. I was able to chart up the Wee Santa because I had all of the flosses, so that was good. Um, but anyways, these are my favorite um, little things to get every month. I love the colors, I love the floss. I feel like I'm adding to my stash gradually. I still do sometimes have to buy floss for a particular project, but it has helped. So if you need to build your stash, any of these types of clubs are really, really great. They have fabric clubs. They have, um, they have a, 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 a Wichelt, I think it's a Wichelt, uh, fabric club through Fat Quarter Shop. You can get a 28 count linen or a 14 count Ada, um, one cut, one package per month. And it's a different color each um, each month. Same thing with the floss fix. Okay, so I I love this. And not only do you get a little stitchy fun in the mail once a month, they're really pretty colors, and you can use them. <clears throat> the next thing that I 
that I have found are floss drops. When I started stitching a year ago, I, when I started stitching a year ago, I was bobbinating everything and taking the bobbins and putting them on the floss rings. And that, that was okay. Uh, sorry, I think I just put a fingerprint on my glasses. Um, anyways, the bobbinating was fine, but I found that the threads started to unwind and tangle and look a little messy. And so I started watching people and they were using their floss drops and enjoying them. So I thought, okay, let me find a floss drop. So I've tried two different styles and this style is the one that I am using the most. I keep buying. It's a teardrop shape. So it's got the hole at the top to go on your ring. This is where you put the skein. And this hole here is for your working threads, the threads, oops, the threads that you're using. Um, you know, you can, when you're done and you have partial thread back, you, instead of just throwing it away or putting it back in with a big skein, you can have it separate, which is really nice because you don't have to wonder, you're going to have a bunch of partially used um, strands, uh, like, um, you know how they come with six strands. You don't wind up with one that has four or something on it unknowingly. Anyway, so I really like these. They're acrylic. They come with a protective, um, coating on them or a protective sheet like the acrylic does. So you just peel that off. Even having a day off, I just, I'm still discombobulated. And you can do it on both sides, and then it comes up with the clear look. Um, I just use these for DMC. I have the DMC stickers. I stick them on there, and they don't come off. Um, unlike the bobbins that you can get, um, Hobby Lobby's Art, Artiste or Artist brand, and um, the DMC plastic bobbins these can come off but on this acrylic it doesn't and eventually the goal will be to to put it to store it on this and it will fit so it should work out just fine um, I've only broken two but let me say when I've broken them I think how I <laughs> How I store my my projects, I have a very large um, oil cloth uh, tote bag next to me, and that's where I put my holiday and seasonal stitching whips. The kitten gets in there, the dog gets in there, everybody gets in there, and I think sometimes they might snap and break. The other thing is that when I'm working on a project and I want to come back to it, I'll put it back in the, t in the bag and then I put the bag in between, I slip it in between the cushion of the chair and the arm of the chair. So if an animal gets up there or if I sit down or if something happens, it gets, um, it gets stressed and I think it cracks. So I think that's why they've cracked. They are pretty thick. I don't really think this is a, um, a huge issue and when they're acrylic I mean you're probably gonna have some breakage I haven't had a lot the other one that I picked that I tried I had a lot more breakage um, just the design of them was not great so um, I prefer this one for now so next is the unstitcher now I've lost my cap but this is the unstitcher and um, when this first came out, I thought, mm, please, a needle works just fine. Um, sure, a needle works fine unless your needle bends or breaks. Um, then you might not, or if your stitches in there kind of tight and you're having a hard time pulling it out, you could really kind of destroy your needle. This is, I don't know if you can tell. It's very thick. It's a, like a very thick needle with a point. 
and it's embedded in plastic. This is easier to hold and it's stronger than your regular needle. So you can carefully unpick your stitches with this and not worry about a needle breaking or flipping out of your hand and losing it. It's substantial. So I went ahead when I bought it and tried it, I fell in love with it. I use it 99% of the time. If I have to stitch anything, unstitch something more than just one or two stitches, I will pull this out and use it. Uh, next that brings, um, brings me to um, the Floss Fairy Wand. I'm not going to take this out of the package because I want this to be part of a giveaway when we reach a thousand subscribers. We're getting closer. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is a little wand. It's like a little um, bottle brush brush or, you know, like something that you would clean a straw out with, you know, something like that. Uh, and it's on a sparkly. Well, this one's a sparkly stick. And this is really nice. I've used this to brush out once I've cut my flosses and I cut them with a very fine um, embroidery scissor or I, I'm very careful and I use a seam ripper to cut my threads. Then I sometimes will use this to pull them out. It does get the floss kind of caught in the brush, but it's easy enough to fix and pull out. Um, the other thing that I've used this for is, you know how when you've stitched and then you frog and it leaves the holes, um, sometimes you, you're not going to be stitching in that same area again. So I take this and I just gently brush the fabric and it moves those, uh, those linen fibers back kind of into place. So um, this I've used a lot and I really do um, enjoy it. So if you haven't tried it already, you might want to give that a go. <clears throat> Next is my neck light. This neck light I picked up on Amazon. It's a Carson neck light uh, powered by three AAA batteries. And it's got two sets for brightness. I have the screen door open. The puppy's sitting here next to me and I have the screen door open in case he wants to go out because it's a retractable screen door and he doesn't know that it's there and I don't want him to break it. And um, a bug just flew in and then flew out. I sound like a bee. <laughs> so I had to make sure it made its way back out the door. Anyways, this is really nice. I use this a lot when I was traveling and not necessarily in the car, but in the hotel room when the lights kind of dim and you can position it however you want to around your neck and you can, you know, adjust these up or down or however, and then you turn them on and it provides task lighting so that you can stitch. Um, I will say one funny thing about this is if you get it too close to your, um, your artery here, it, it moves with your pulse, <laughs> but it still does a fine job of, um, it still does a fine job of lighting your work. So I'm very happy that I purchased this. I would take it on a retreat. I would definitely take it again for travel. I've used it for, um, if I'm working on a darker fabric a little bit later in the night, even though I've got can lights on in the, um, in the living room. Sometimes I need just a little bit more light and I'll put it on for that. So it's very helpful. And I, if you don't have a task light, you need to get something. If not that one, pick up something because it does, it is helpful. The next thing, um, finishing tape and, um, dots. So in the paper crafting world, we do have double-sided sticky tape and we do have double-sided sticky dots. We have foam dots. We have all kinds of things that are double-sided. Um, I was so excited when I learned that they had the same thing for fabrics. So I picked up a roll of three quarter inch finishing tape, double-sided, acid free, which is important. Again, it's so Emma. I will, I will link this below. Again, everything's going to be linked below. And, um, 
this is very nice. You, um, I secure the corners with sticky dots and they have a couple different sizes of sticky dots. And it's the same thing. It's so Emma peel them off. I put them in the corners of my project. I peel off the corner and I go opposite and I fold the corners over, flip my project over, make sure that it's centered, do the other side. And then I take the finishing tape and I go from corner to corner and I secure the sides down with this. Um, sure you can use hot glue. Um, sure you can, um, you can lace, but if you're looking for, I use this mostly for my, my quick seasonal small stitches. If I was doing something bigger, I would pin, uh, into foam board, acid free foam board, or I would, um, lace. But for my quick little holiday stitches, I, I love this. And you get a pack, quite a few, you get 240 dots here in this package. Sorry. And you get 144 of the large ones. So, I mean, it's, there's a lot in here. You're it's one package will last you a while. Same thing with the tape. One, one roll will last you quite a while. Uh, the next thing, uh, when you're working on small pillows or felt ornaments, things like that, um, sometimes finding the right tool to help you stuff those things, um, can be tricky. I've used crochet hooks. I've used, um, bamboo skewers. I've used pencils with erasers. Um, and then I discovered the stuffing tool and that's what it's called the stuffing tool. So it's got a nice handle, long, um, long wand, long tubing. And then on the end of the tubing, I don't know if you can see, it's got, there you go. You can kind of see it. It's got kind of a, <coughs> a break. Oh, goodness. Sorry. We're barking at squirrels. Now. <coughs> got her. Gunner. He's never reacted to squirrels before. <laughs> I think because my, my she shed is in the back corner of the yard and the fence is literally three feet away from where I'm sitting and um, the squirrels run the fence. So I think he was just startled by it. Anyways. Um, So these little prongs really grasp the fiber fill or whatever your stuffing material is. And I take a little bit of it when I'm working. I'll take a little bit. I loft it. I put this on the tube and then I just, I, I kind of turn it a little bit to secure it. And then I insert it into the pillow, get it to where I want it to be and then pull it out. No problem. It helps you. You can move the stuffing around with this really easily because these prongs at the top grab it. So if you don't already have something like this, you might want to give it a try. Because like I said, um, it's sturdy being metal. And then these prongs are a game changer, game changer, excuse me. Um, the next one I'm sure a lot of you have used, but I really like this. It's so Emma, uh, cross stitch key. It's a corner guide and I've got several corner guides, but this seems to be my go-to for quite a few things. Um, so you can measure from the corner of your fabric an inch and a half, two inches or two and a half inches. If you have a mystery count of fabric, you can line it up with the, um, measures at the bottom. And if, if you line them up the holes with the lines here, that tells you you know, if they're lining up perfectly here, then you've got a 25 count. If they're lining up perfectly here, then you've got a 32 count. Um, it also does 10 count and 14 count on this side. So, um, so this is very handy. It also will tell you uh, a reference guide there in the middle of how many floss strands that you need for the different counts of fabric and the needle size that would be best for that uh, count of fabric. 
And then of course the a ruler up here that only goes to three inches. I wish this went more to like six inches, but three has been helpful. So um, anyway, so I grab this all the time. If you haven't used um, a corner guide for stitching, you might want to consider trying one out. They have lots, lots and lots and lots are out on the marketplace, but I, I like this one because you can use it for so many more things than just a corner guide. So, <clears throat> Next is Thimble It. I was stitching, um, I don't know, was it this time last year? And I had a really sharp needle um, for a, a small, uh, a large count fabric, like a 40 count fabric. And my needle was very, very sharp and I kept poking and I wound up with cuts and it hurt, but I needed to keep stitching. So I tried a regular thimble and I don't know about you. I don't know how people can sew with thimbles. Um, it's very awkward to me. And I know that the more you use it, the better you get. I've tried leather, I've tried the metal and none of it, none of it works for me. Um, so then I thought I would try this one. These are sticky silicone. Again, one pack can last you a lifetime because one of these you can use over and over and over again. And I just, wherever my needle is hitting on my finger, I just put it on my finger. And then it hits on the silicone and it protects your finger. Um, game changing. And I don't use it all the time, but when I'm stitching with a particularly sharp needle and I'm doing a lot of stitching, um, and I start feeling that my fingers are getting a little raw, I will put one of these on and um, better than a Band-Aid. Now, if I'm bleeding, of course, I'm not gonna use this, but this is before you actually start bleeding. Um, this, this really does help. So um, if you haven't checked this out, I would recommend it. It's called Thimble It. And um, you get 64 self-stick ovals. You can um, put them on, um, I don't necessarily put them on paper, but I'll put them on like my laptop or my, um, or the, or the corner of my, of my stitchy bag. You know, I have, I have these, I have these bags, so I'll put it at the corner. Um, and it, it doesn't lose its stick very easily and you can reuse them over and over and over again. So this is a really good investment in my opinion. And then last but not least, the next thing that I really do enjoy is the cross stitch plus app. Now I have done uh, a tutorial on this app and I will link it at the the back end of the video. Um, but this is a, this is a handy way of tracking your supplies I, and doing much more. I, you can journal, so you can track your inventory, your charts, your thread, your linens, beads, embellishments, mostly Mill Hill for the beads. So I don't have a lot of that, um, in there, but linen, I try to put my linen in there. I try to put charts in there, uh, threads in there. You have a way of journaling. Uh, so when you start a project, when you end a project, um, if you've got any like linen or project notes that you want. You can put them all in here. It's all here. What I like the most about this is the inventory portion. I can be anywhere. And as long as I have my phone and I've entered my charts, you've got to be good at entering. I, the chances of me buying a duplicate are slim. Have I bought duplicates? Yes, I have. Yes, I have bought duplicates. Um, because I either didn't check because I knew I didn't have it or because I didn't put it in there 
It's one of the two. That's the only time I've ever really bought a duplicate with, uh, unconsciously. If I decide to buy a duplicate for a giveaway, that's a different situation. Um, so I, I use this to track my threads, my flosses, um, kind of helps me keep track of where they are. You can take your threads and you can, you can put down what projects they're being used for. So for example, baking tin, spring stitching seasons and star spangled ornaments. And I have three skeins. I think I have more than three now, but it says I have three. Um, the reason I put the charts in the bottom, which both of these are, are complete, I should take it out, is because if I'm running out and I need to use some, I can look it up by floss name and I can see, well, where, what project is this in? So I can grab a little bit of it and use it. So um, that's why I like this. Now the downside, of course, with anything, you, it's only as good as you entering the information. Um, so there's that. I am going to be trying, I purchased a happy planner and I think I printed out, let me see. And then I went on to Etsy and I got a couple of different things. I got um, a whip tracker and I thought there, maybe I didn't print it out yet. I thought I, I picked up a, project sheet where you can, all the things that I put in the phone, I can put on a piece of paper and I'm going to try the paper, paper and pen way, um, for this next little bit, because I would have easier access to the information. If this just stores the inventory and I keep track, it might be easier for me to access it and use it for, the, for my purpose. Now that I've been doing this for about a year and I've been using this for about maybe nine months, um, I think I'm going to add the physical, you know, the paper, paper chart part or the paper process to it to see which I really do prefer. Um, if you want to save paper, I know a lot of you like to download your charts onto that. I don't know the name of the app, but it, it lets you kind of track along with your stitching electronically. Um, then the app might be right. Just perfect for you. So, that's it. My 12 favorite things for 2023. I, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, do if you have any of your favorite tools that you like to use, please, um, make a comment in the box below or in the comment section. Um, things have changed so much. Um, when I started this journey almost a year ago, um, well, a little over a year ago, I, um, maybe a couple years ago now, actually, I was quite surprised at how, um, how much things have changed. And I'm sure that I've got a lot more to learn. Um, so if there's a, a, a tool that you like to use, mention it so that I can check it out. Someone else can check it out. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't done so already and you've made it to the end of the video, thank you. Um, please hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, share the video, like the video, comment on the video. All of the things help move the, the content out. We're very close to a thousand subscribers. I would love to reach a thousand by the end of the year so that I can do my my Flossversary and a thousand subscriber celebration all together in one thing. I've got a couple of ideas for giveaways already and I've purchased a couple of things. Um, so I'm really excited and anxious to get going on that um, so that I can, you know, have fun with you guys and share some things. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have a great um, holiday season. Of course, I'll be back with my regular floss tube on um, Saturday or Sunday this week. We'll see. Thanksgiving is just a couple days away, so have a happy Thanksgiving. Um, and until next time, have a great week and happy stitching. Bye.